We praise the Lord, everyone. Shalom. Uh, welcome to um, all of you to this course on Christian history and Christian history and <laughs> what is that? Christian history and hello. You don't know what course you come for today this morning. Yes, Christian history and missions. Thank God. Um, Yes, happy to see. Uh, thank you, Andrew. I didn't have a vacation though, but it's good to see you all after the break. Uh, good morning, Sister Gertrude. Um, so welcome everyone to this course on Christian history and um, missions. Uh, welcome to all our online students, our e-learning students, and also our uh, in-person students. It's good to see um, all of you in-person students back after your break. Um, good, exciting time for the fall semester. Okay, uh, so the course introduction to this course has been posted in the classroom page, and for those of you who are e-learners, it's been uh, uh, put up as well. So please uh, read the welcome note and the course introduction, and I've also uh, uploaded um, the APC publication that we will be studying. We'll be studying uh, this book. Uh, revivals, visitations, and moves of God. Okay. Um, so, how many of you are excited about this course? If you're not excited, doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, can we have some show of hands? Uh, online students, feel free to, you know, put a thumbs up or raise your. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm just curious to know how many of you love history. You love history. Oh, great. Um, I love history when I was in school, of course, but I could never memorize and remember the dates and the, uh, you know, the places. But I love history, yes. Um, so don't worry, even if you don't uh, enjoy history, OK? Um, it's OK. Um, you know, sometimes when we look at the word history and missions, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, uh, I don't like history, or you can say I don't like missions. So I just love theology, or I love just learning about the Bible. Um, so you can have different views, you can have different likes, dislikes. Uh, so uh, for those of you who are excited, great. For those of you who are not excited, don't worry, you know, just brace yourself up. Um, I believe that this study is going to be very interesting uh, and inspiring. Uh, so even if you're not keen on memorizing dates and the numbers, don't worry about it. But the story is that we will be looking at how God, you know, brought about revival in the church uh, and among people groups, the nations, the nations of this world. You know, it will be very enriching. Uh, even as you look at the studies, uh, stories, uh, we'll explore, you know, uh, in this um, book that is there. You know, it'll give you uh, good insights and will just inspire you for um, God's move in your life and also God to use you mightily like he has used uh, men and women in the past, okay? So uh, even if you're not excited, don't worry. You'll enjoy learning this course. And if you did enjoy learning the course, at the end of the course, please drop a note, you know, uh, at the end of the semester, saying whether you enjoyed it or not, it'll just help, okay? Because it's the first time I'm teaching this course, so I'm a little uh, excited as well. And it's always good to learn about the moves of God and what God has accomplished in the lives of people and what he can do amongst us even today. Amen? Okay? So uh, what particularly I love about this um, course content that we are uh, looking at, that it's not just boring history. Okay, like your history textbooks, it's not just boring history, but in this book, uh, which will be studying the revivals, visitations, and um, uh, the move of God. Uh, okay, Shaker is saying that the notes are not there. I thought the notes were there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I, I missed uh, posting it here. I'll just, um, I'll post it to, uh, just give me a minute, please. I'll just uh, do that quickly.
So many mosquitoes here. No, no, I've already put, yeah, you can please put on the fan. It'll just help us. And if you can just close the door as well, because that noise is so. Uh... Uh, yes, so I've posted it on the classroom page. You can uh, access it now. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so in this book that we are going to be studying, Revivals, Visitations, and the Moves of God, it basically captures uh, the essence of how God has powerfully moved, you know, throughout history, uh, just inspiring the world, uh, building his church, and uh, drawing people to himself. Okay, so that is what this book is about so even as we study past events even as we consider what god has done and um, as a church today as a church as individuals as well uh, we can expect and we can pursue god for the similar movements or the similar moves of god that he has done in the past okay so he can do the same thing in our time amen Okay, so um, in this book, when we are studying, we'll be basically reflecting on history. And when we are studying this, uh, you know, it raises several questions. Uh, firstly, you know, what should we be expecting from God? Okay, so that is what when we are studying this book should be a question, you know, okay, God has done all this in the past. So what should we be expecting of God? in our present season of life, in my life, in, in, in our church, um, as a city, as a nation, and as nations, what should we be expecting from God? And how can we uh, prepare ourselves for the move of God? Okay, so God is moving, he has his plans, and so how can we prepare ourselves for the move of God? And, um, you know, so these are not just academic inquiries, but these are vital questions that we ask as believers. What should we expect from God? And how can we prepare ourselves for the move of God? Okay. So what do you expect to learn from this course? Any thoughts? Christian history and mission, what are you expecting? Or did you just come to class and say, okay, I, you don't even know what subject. Okay, let me see what's been taught. We'll go with the flow. Doesn't matter. What did you what do you expect from this course when you saw Christian history and missions? Where's the mic? Sister, can I what? say something? Yes, sure. Uh, get rude. Yeah, we are expecting to know the evidence of truth of Christian history, how far it is true. And okay. uh, things that I've written down, you know, and with evidence. Okay. Lucy says, traveling across the world, preaching the word of God. Okay. Yes, Sir Nelson. Maybe in history, they might have done some mistakes. So we can find uh, learn from that and the steps which they took through that mistake so it will be helpful for us okay good yes uh, god has uh, there has been mighty revivals there has been a move of god but yet there has been a lot of uh, mistakes because we're all human in our weaknesses we commit mistakes so what are the mistakes how what we can learn from it and how we can avoid it even as god looks to bring about revival even as God looks to bring about his move. Yes. God's hand in to help him in the extension of his kingdom. Okay, God's hand uh, to move in the extension of his kingdom. Okay. Um, yes, how to extend his kingdom because he wants his kingdom to be extended. Um, yes. Uh, Andrew says to be revived and bring revival to others. Excellent. I think that is, you know, is the whole center crux of what we are really looking at we are not just looking at revival right okay god is going to bring revival we are going to be excited about that uh you know we'll see what he's going to do he's going to bring about a move 
great, super, we look at it, but actually it is us who are going to be revived and then we bringing about revival. So when God brought about revival, who did he use? Yes, he used individuals, right? Individuals in whom he birthed you know, his plan and purpose and who he stirred up their hearts. And so we see it's God using individuals to birth great movements, to birth great revivals. So for revivals to be birthed, for the move of God to take place, it, it's important that we are to be revived, right? So it begins with us. So you're not saying, okay, I'll wait and see who God uses, what revival he's bringing, what move he's bringing in our city or nation. But, you know, you should say, God, revive me and use me to bring up, to birth your revival, right? How many of you think you need a revival in your life? Yeah, I think we all need revivals in our life, right? Yes. Um, thank you, online students. John, John bless you. <laughs> okay. God who worked in the past history, still he is a God who is working with us. So we'll be more encouraged by going through these Christian, through going through the Christian history. Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, uh, just before we go to chapter one, uh, we're looking at introduction now. Uh, we will define what is revival, what is visitation, and what is the move of God. To get more clarity about what is revival, what is visitation, and what is the move of God, okay? So when you look at the word revival, what comes to your mind? What is the basic understanding for the word revival? Huh? Sorry? Revolution, okay? When uh, revival comes, when you think about the word revival, what comes to your mind? Bring more life, okay. Uh, Lucy says change. Yes. What else? Coming Bring more life. life. Coming back to life. Coming back to life. Yes. Exactly. Anything else? Reformation. Okay. It's it's a word in itself. <laughs> okay. So if you just take this word revival, uh, okay. There's uh, Gertrude says. Okay, uh, to get to it, it's on the on the stream page. If you look at it, uh, I posted it. Uh, the course content. I just posted it, so you'll find it there. The course content. Okay. So Andrew says breakthrough. Angeline says God's power manifesting. Uh, Abhishek says revival is God's arrival. Okay, he's quoting Lou Lou Ingle from. Uh, the chapter one and Lucy says from darkness to kingdom of light okay thank you everyone so when we take this word revival okay and we separate it from the Christian context on the basic level uh, revival just basically means bringing something back to life okay reviving you know uh, they took him to the hospital they tried to revive him okay so it's bringing somebody back to life or bringing something back to life. It's renewing. Revival is also renewing something that has become dead or dormant. Okay. So revival basically means bringing something back to life. And it also means renewing something that is uh, become dead or dormant. You know what is dormant, right? Dormant means just something that is lying lifeless. It has life, but it shows that it is lifeless. It's not doing anything much. Okay. So <clears throat> that is what is revival. Now, let me ask you this question. Uh, would you say that uh, the church today needs revival? Yes. Yes. All of you agree. Yeah. We see that God is moving powerfully in many pockets, in many parts of the world. Okay, there's some areas that God is moving, but much of Christianity is basically dead, right? In certain ways, much of Christianity is basically uh, dead. And that is because maybe we lack an understanding or we lack knowledge or we lack the exposure that uh, keeps us from experiencing the fullness of 
God, right? God is great. He's limitless. We look at that. And he wants us to pursue him, to know him. And he wants to, uh, you know, uh, reveal all of himself to us. Okay. God wants, the, uh, the word of God says that he, you know, um, the fullness that is in the Godhead, he wants to reveal that or he wants to make it manifest or he wants us to enjoy that fullness. So when we come to this course, you know, um, and study this course, you know, we recognize that, you know, hey, we ourselves are in need of a revival. Okay, we need to be awakened, we need to uh, be revived. Okay, yes, revival happens, God uh, does a revival, but also the revival has to start with me, I need to be revived. Uh, each one of us have to re be revived in so many areas of our lives. So when revival happens, uh, it's when God intervenes in, in a very unusual supernatural way. So what is revival? Basically, it's, you know, bringing back from death to life, some things that are even dormant. But what happens when revival takes place is basically is God himself who is intervening it's not humans it's not a church it's not a group of people yes they desire the move of god they desire a change but it's god who intervenes and it's god who does the uh, unusual and he works in supernatural ways in ways that hasn't been seen before or is uh, not really seen before in ways that hasn't been experienced before okay so uh, we would have seen it in the early church, we would have seen it um, on the day of Pentecost when the revival started. Okay, but it's not something that we have experienced. We do experience the power of God, yes or no? When you have your supernatural hours at Bible college, when you have your morning worships at uh, Bible college, you do experience the power of God. When we meet in fellowship groups, when we meet at church, when we go for fasting and praying, when we go for certain crusades, we experience the power of uh, God. So we are not talking about that kind of, you know, experience, but we are talking about, um, uh, you know, a, a full blown, you know, uh, uh, experience uh, God like we have never experienced him before. And that is what is revival. But we also need to know that revival always echoes what has happened in the book of Acts, right? So the Bible is our standard. The Bible is always our standard so if you want to know if this revival this move of god is basically from god then you go back to scripture so anything in your life any new doctrine any teaching even if what we are teaching at bible college what i am teaching you it's always important for you to go back to the word of god because the word of god is our standard we look at the word of god and we learn and we see because the word of god is the truth everything that god wanted to reveal to mankind is revealed in his book there's no more revelations that is needed everything that god wanted to reveal to mankind is revealed in the person and the work of jesus christ yes we say that hey i received new revelations from the bible when i read the word of god that's basically you're saying that hey i actually got I could catch what God has revealed in his word. That is what uh, we are trying to um, say. So uh, when revival happens in our midst today, uh, in our church today or in the future, it will always echo what has happened or occurred in the book of Acts or in the early church and how they have been revived. Okay. So in revival, another component of revival is that we experience God's presence and we experience in his power in a very fresh way. Yes, we experience God's presence, we experience his power day to day, but we experience that in a very, very fresh way. And this is what is called a visitation. Okay, so we are looking at revivals, visitations and moves. So this is what is visitation. Okay, where God himself is coming and he's meeting us in a very special way. He's coming with all of his presence, with all his, his power. And when God meets us in a special way, it just is not an experience that lasts for a day. It's not an experience that lasts for a week. It's not an experience that lasts, you know, till the revival uh, or the move of God is there. But it's an experience that becomes a lifestyle. 
it's an experience that you know is a new way of our life it's a new way of living and that is what we call as a visitation so visitation is basically when god we experience god in new profound uh, ways in fresh ways we experience his presence we experience his power and that is what we call visitation where god himself is coming to us and meeting us in a special way and when god comes and meets us in a special way you know it becomes a way of life okay it becomes a new way of living okay so it's not just this amazing experience that happens and uh, for some days and then our life goes back to the usual no it's not that okay so revival or the visitation of god is not something that we experience for a day or a, a period of time or a month or till the revival starts and then we all go back to our normal usual way of life no it becomes a lifestyle it becomes a pattern it becomes a way that we live for the rest of our lives so what we are basically saying here is that when god comes you know he wants to stay okay so revival might end the revival meetings might end uh, people um, are coming together and enjoying the presence of god will end but it's not an end in itself because people are still pursuing god they are hungry for god they're thirsting for god they're taking this revival they're taking this visitation and they are going out to their in their city in the in their state in their nation in the nations of the world and they are birthing multiple revivals and uh, you see this in the book of acts yes or no yes on the day of pentecost you know um, many people who had come to Jerusalem okay so during the the feast of pentecost you know uh, it's a 60 day feast the the feast of the first fruits um, uh, the feast of harvest uh, and pentecost um, you know um, the the feast of the passover it's called pentecost and the feast of the passover the first fruits and uh, the harvest so the 60 day period so all of them travel to uh to Jerusalem okay and stay for that 60 days and so god look, saw that this was the right opportune moment the kairos moment when he sent the holy spirit okay so when we look at things we need to look at why god did it in that period so we see that many of them came and then when there was that hurricane like sound of the wind you know many people were drawn to that room where the uh, the apostles and the disciples were and uh, they see the move of god and then you know peter preaches that sermon and how many people are saved 3000 people were saved and these 3000 people were so excited that was a revival actually a revival that was happening they were so excited that even after persecution broke out what did the disciples do when persecution broke out stephen was martyred what did the disciples do what the believers did what did the believers do when persecution broke out yes they dispersed they went away to different areas but they did not hide themselves what did they do they preached the gospel wherever they went philip went to samaria he did mighty signs miracles and wonders and there was a great move of god in the city of samaria so there was that move that was happening so when revival happens it just does not happen in that place and ends it's a move of god that is actually it's a visit revival is a visitation we saw that and also it's a move of god where people who experience this revival then become salt and light and they go out and they minister to uh, uh, others and they birth revivals wherever they go so you see uh, the ripple effect of revival and that is what we call as a revival that is what we call as a visitation that is what we call as a move of god so that is why this book is rightly named as revival visitation and move because these three have to go together when there is a revival there is a visitation from god when god comes and there has to be a move okay because that is what move means what you know you're moving out of different places you're spreading the um gospel okay so yeah can we actually conclude that revival is always like a never ending process That's yes we can say it's a never ending process because it becomes a lifestyle it becomes a way of life 
uh, it's uh, uh, it, it moves on. But we have seen, like in uh, you know, in the William Brenham's uh, case, that you know uh, the healing uh, revival came to a to a like a standstill. It became very. Uh, less, but does not mean that God does not move. He does not bring about uh, healing, and uh, you know uh, He does not move. But that kind of uh, uh, experience that is there comes to an end, but then it it moves on to to other places. Yes. And the second question was, uh, who actually initiates revival? Is it God who actually initiates revival, or is it we who pray for revival? It's God who initiates the revival. It's God who births that revival. It's God who stirs up. The hearts of people, and also he um, he knows who he's going to birth, so he stirs it up in them, and they have this deep craving and passion and longing for uh, intimacy with God. So we look at revival as not just somebody who's looking for revival. Revival is birth out of intimacy with God. See, and out of that intimacy of with God flows everything: miracles, signs, wonders. So it's basically God is more concerned about us, um, not just for a move where we are coming to a place of excitement, but in, uh, revival is usually birth out of intimacy with God. Because only when you are intimate with God can you birth that revival right so you see in the life of jesus there was a revival when he was here on the earth why was there such a mighty revival because jesus was so intimate with the father right he says whatever the father says i say whatever my father does i i do wherever my father sends i go i've come to do the will of my father so in revival uh, during jesus's time was birth out of his intimacy with the Father. If you look at the early church in the day of Pentecost, you know, why was there um, a revival? What were the 120 doing when the, uh, the Holy Spirit came in his power? Yes, they were fasting, praying. They were in one accord, fasting and praying. They were pursuing God. They were hungry for God. They were longing for God. And that's when revival is birth. Okay. So, yes, God initiates it. God uh, picks up people, but it's birth out of not people desiring for healing and signs and miracles and all of those, but people desiring and hungering for uh, for God and intimacy with God. Out of that intimacy is birth revival. Okay, so what we were saying that is when God comes, when He visits us, you know, He uh, it becomes a place where He dwells. You know, God loves to dwell with His people. Yes or no? How do we know that? How do we know that God loves to dwell with his people? Yes, God dwelt with the people in the tabernacle. So we see in the Old Testament, we see the tabernacle, you know, where God's presence is coming down. Okay, on the tabernacle, the cloud of his presence is there, and his glory just covers the entire place. So when we are saying we want uh, to uh, a revival, a visitation of God, we're basically looking for that kind of an experience, okay? Uh, for As a church, as individuals, where His glory, where His presence just comes and covers us in our midst, okay? So whenever we gather as a church uh, or as believers, you know, or as individuals, we need to be carrying that glory. We carry that presence everywhere we go. So like Philip, he was, you know, not an apostle. He was not, you know, he was just a steward, just, you know, helping out in the early church. But we see that he was so caught up with that revival. What happens? He carries the power, the presence that is the glory of God. And he, he brings about revival in the city of Samaria. Okay. All of you with me? Yes, okay. Um, so we want to move uh, from a place of, uh, you know, a great experience of God. Revival is a great experience of God. But we want to move from just that momentary great experience of God to a place of, you know, great everyday living with God. Okay. So revival is just moving from a place of great experience from God to a place of everyday living with God. So 
God's visitation should become a habitation. That means should become a dwelling place where he, his presence is daily dwelling with us. And we're just enjoying his presence and we are abiding in his presence. We are carrying his presence and we are carrying his glory. Okay. So that is what means revival and visitation. And we look at what is the move of God. So uh, you know, beyond that is when we take God's glory, we carry his presence wherever we go, is God moving through us and using us to birth revivals in various places. Okay. So when we say that a revival, uh, we say revivals is where God, you know, reveals himself in unusual supernatural ways. And when God reveals himself in new, fresh ways that we have never experienced before, that is revival. And visitation is when God comes, okay? He comes with all of his presence, his power, and his presence and power is revealed in our midst. And then, you know, from the visitation, we carry this power of God. We carry this presence of God and we see God moving through us. So what God is revealing to the church, you know, it then or individuals, it starts affecting communities. And we, we, we will look at stories of how uh, communities, I'll read experts from, you know, from the Welsh revival. We'll see how the whole community was uh, changed. Okay. So the community changes, the society changes, and it starts to impact our nation and the nations of the world. So that is when we say it's a revival. So revival leads to visitation and visitation uh, leads to the move of God. The move of God, not just us as a church experiencing it, not just as a fellowship group experiencing it, not like just the Bible college experiencing it. Now, you know, recently there was the Asbury uh, revival, right? Um, the, the Bible college, you know, Asbury Bible college, there was a revival that happened there. Now, that revival was, was just among the Bible college students? Was it just among the Bible college students? Yes, it became global, right? In a few days time, people from all over the US came to Asbury uh, Bible College uh, from people from all over the world went there because there was such a powerful move of God. Classes were all suspended. But you see that that is what is called as a revival. So we, uh, I think just two years back, you know, two years back was the Asbury uh, revival. This is a powerful move of God. So people came from all over. They were living on the streets, you know, because there's no places uh, to live and in the car and you know, waking up early in the morning, whole day just spending time. And people from all over the world also was excited about this revival that happened in Asbury. Okay. So uh, that is what we call as a revival. That is what we call as a visitation because a revival and a leads to visitation and then it leads to the move of. Um, God. Okay. Um, so we see that revival is supernatural. It does not involve, it's, it's beyond human efforts. You know, if you look at revival, you know, it's not just human efforts. It's not us doing anything because people get tired by the, you know, at the end of one week, people are exhausted, but it's the Holy Spirit that works and moves and brings in uh, people. So it's not our agendas. It's not our plans. It's not our efforts. It's not like, hey, I want revival in this, in, in Bangalore City. It's good. We pray about that. We press in. But it's just basically it's God coming in his power and completely transforming us, transforming our society, our community, our nation and the nations. OK. Um, and so what happens as a result of revival is that people go out and share the gospel. So there's a lot more evangelization. There's a lot more of mission work that happens. And there's a lot more of fulfilling the great commission that has happen as a result of that revival that has started. Okay. Any questions so far? Any questions? All of you with me? Okay. You've not gone off to Asbury or <laughs> some other revivals. Okay. Um, okay. So we see that in the book of Acts, you know, and through all of through the centuries, when revival has happened, the church has basically, what has happened? The church has grown. Yes, the church has risen. The church has grown from a few set of believers, 
120 or a little more or maybe 500 it's moved to 3000 it's moved to 5000 me moved to so much and it's actually moved from a set of believers from the middle east to the nation surrounding the middle east and over the entire world yes but um so do you actually uh, one minute uh, uh online students when our in-person students are speaking can you hear them yes no okay yeah okay uh, just a uh, basic question so do, when, when there is a revival mm -hmm. so do we actually see that in the numbers and the growth or do you actually feel that within the spirit that there is a revival how do you oh you feel in your sense in your spirit you also see uh, growth you know you see many people just coming uh, and, you know, just people are, uh, uh, revival is basically God reviving the hearts of people. So sinners just giving their lives, people's lives being transformed, uh, people who have backslidden, coming back to God, uh, pursuing God, you know, giving their lives to go out and evangelize and preach the gospel and fulfill the Great Commission. A growing church is a sign of revival. A growing church, uh, so no, that's that's what we're seeing. We're saying revival is when God comes in a very unusual and supernatural uh, way. It's not something that we experience every day. Yes, God wants. It's not that God is looking for a revival to for the church to grow. Yes, He is moving. He's not that He's not moving, or He just moves one time, and you know. It's not that God moves, uh, God is reviving people. He's reviving each one of us. He takes us through seasons of revival as well. But here we are talking about, specifically when we're talking about revival, we are talking about God, when God comes in an unusual supernatural way and there's a powerful a visitation and it's not a normal experience, like I was saying. We, we can normally expect God. Uh, the church grows, yes, when the pastor and people are very faithful, church grows and they are involved in missions, evangelization. There is a move of God's son, but we're talking specifically about uh, this. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Like uh, I have heard like after persecution, uh, many says that uh, after persecution, persecution uh, church grows more and more. Church and the believers, yes. grow, it increased. So what will call this? What do we call that? Yeah. Yes. Is it revival or so, yeah? So if you look at in the early church, there was a revival, and usually when God births a revival, there will be persecution because there will be many people who come and speak against it and you know uh, publish things that are wrong, that are not right. And when we've looked at um, you know God's generals, you've studied some of them in the last week uh, uh, during the um uh orientation week you saw that uh, you know um uh, uh, maria you know maria eater uh, woodworth we see that uh, god birthed a revival through her but you know many of them put court cases against her and and uh, so she was caught up and many of those court cases didn't last excepting one but many people came and testified that it was not something like a trance or a hypnotizing that she was doing it was basically the move of god and how they experienced god i think uh, what nelson was trying to say whenever there is a persecution against the church yeah. there is a is revival that, that a follows revival? there is a revival that follows oh whenever there's a persecution in a in the church what about first there is a revival then there is persecution it's like whenever we see a persecution we do see there is a revival that really follows and you know the church that really grows and the word that is more uh, yeah we uh, we've seen that uh, uh, but okay It was a. It was. We don't call that a revival. Uh, we call that more of people really pursuing God and people coming to God and God using uh, that as a um, as a witness as this, and as a testimony to, you know, uh, and their their lives that was given up as a sacrifice. He used that as a, a blessing. Or what Satan uh, used uh, against them, God turns around that as a blessing. But we don't. Uh, call that as a revival yes yes yeah but we if you look at in the early church uh, there was the um, 
you know, there was Pentecost and then there was a move of God and then there was a persecution, but the move continued. Okay. So, yeah. You never know. God can work in unusual ways. He can even use a persecution to birth a revival. You never know. That's God. He's sovereign. He does things in his own ways. Okay. Um, so any other questions? Okay. Any examples of revival in India? Yes, uh, there were. Ex there are examples. We look at that uh, when we study this. Is that okay, Lucy? Yeah. So God is interested in India. He loves India, not only the US <laughs> and Europe, but uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So... Um, um, So why are we looking at um, all of what, you know, we'll be looking at various stories, various revivals, history, um, and what God has done in the past. Now, why are we looking at all of this? Why do you think we're, we're going to be studying all of this? What, why is it necessary to, to look at the Welsh revival and, you know, um, uh, the, um, the Azusa Street revival? Why should we look at all of those revivals? Why should we study them? Why should we look at the past? Okay, you can you can uh, you know that God is going to move in the same way He can do the things that He has done in the past. Okay, and like Nelson, yeah. Okay, you want revival in India? Okay, yes, good. What else? And like Nelson said, that we can learn from what God has done, how He's birthed revivals, what He has done, what specifically He has done. Uh, we can learn from what God has done in the past. And, uh, you know, um, what does it take for us to birth that revival or that visitation, that move of God? So what does it take for us to receive a visitation from God and how we can prepare ourselves? So yes, it's a desire. All of us desire that, hey, I want a revival in India. I want a revival in whichever country that you, you know, uh, you come from or you are part of here. Uh, that's very good. But then you need to look at what God has done in the past and say, hey, what does it take for us to receive, you know, such a visitation from God? And how can we prepare ourselves? Okay. So how do we prepare ourselves or how do we become good stewards of revival? To increase, to encourage and to pursue it, to know more of God, to be encouraged, yes, to increase the spread of the gospel. Yes, good, thank you. Or when we experience revival, okay, how do we fully facilitate that um, in a way that will allow it to grow and expand and to reach other people? Yes. How do we become good stewards of a revival? Or, you know, when we experience revival, how do we fully facilitate that in a way that it will allow it to grow and expand and reach other people? For your first part of the question, it's like to, through prayer, fasting, and seeking God's thing that we prepare ourselves. Okay, so fasting and hungering for God. Okay, yes. A look at James chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. So can somebody please read James chapter 5, verses 7 and 8, please? James 5, 7 and 8. Be patient then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains. You too. Be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Yeah. So in uh, the land of Israel, it's basically agricultural, right? The, an agricultural society, agrarian society. So uh, there's something called uh, um, the, 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 the first rains and the latter rains. Okay. So the first rains is basically sometime in October when the rain comes and the land is uh, soft enough to sow the seeds. And the latter rain is when, you know, uh, uh, it brings about the harvest. Okay. So that is what we, when we read, we see two rains in the Bible, the early rain and the, the latter rain. So the, lat the early rain comes and it's, uh, the earth is, uh, you know, good enough for uh, to sow the seeds 
and uh, you know um, the ground is soft enough to sow the seeds and the latter rain is when the crops would ripen and be ready for harvest okay so you know uh, uh, we uh, in the bible we read you know pray for the latter rain okay so what does it mean you know pray for the rain that is the rain of god that will come and fall upon us that would you know ripen the harvest is ready the harvest is plentiful okay ripen the harvest so that the lord of the harvest can come and take his harvest okay so we when we look at it in a spiritual way it's god coming to take his harvest okay it's god coming to you know take his the believers who believed in him so he's coming back to take all those who have received the gospel and all those who have given their hearts to him and allowed him to move in their lives okay so uh, we should be expecting the latter reign of god where god himself will reveal himself in power and god will come in a way that you know we can never imagine or expect and when he'll come he will pour out himself on us he will come in his power like never before and he will collect the harvest okay so it's time for the latter rain right uh, it's time for the the harvest the harvest is plentiful it's time for the harvester to come and gather his people so we are looking basically for the uh, looking forward for the coming of Jesus Christ we are awaiting his coming with eager expectation and this is the latter rain that the bible talks about that you know when people will experience god's presence and power in our midst and people's lives will be changed so revival basically means not just you know signs miracles and wonders that happen unusual signs miracles and wonders or so many that you can't even count or keep a count of it's revival also means when god is basically bringing people back to himself from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light like somebody mentioned i think it was lucy okay drawing people uh, to god because it's time for the uh, the lord of the harvest to uh, come back so we're looking at this um, and we're looking at it uh, in in a in a sense that you know god is going to come and what is the move of god what is the revival that he is uh, going to be birthing and how his power will be manifest in us and how as his people you know we should prepare ourselves so that we can birth his revival you know we can uh, look forward for his visitation and we can be that move of god taking his um, gospel to the uh, to our nation and to the nations in fresh new ways in a glorious way okay so that was just the introduction any questions any questions online students any questions okay we just have uh, one more minute and then we'll begin with chapter 1 Yes. We both are very happy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we'll uh, stop here and we'll take a break um, and we'll come back after the break and um, we'll study chapter 1, okay? Thank you.